Matt. Oh, good morning, Chloe. How are you this morning? Oh, I'm great. I'm just great. Mm, me too, mm -hmm. Chloe. Look, I wanted to. Yeah. I want to show you. Uh, uh, we have uh, uh, my green screen is messing this all up, but look at that. It's so beautiful. The Hello World coffee mug. We've officially got merch, everybody. We're official. We're we're kind of a big deal. We're uh, kind of a big deal. Oh, sorry about that. A little <laughs> coffee went down the goodness gracious the wrong tube there. Uh, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to the show. Uh, uh, it is uh, December seventh, not November thirtieth, as uh, was said in the runner uh, during the countdown. There, um, as well, much as I it feels like we've been time traveling, yeah. Uh, that's Just usually back. something Mike, our lovely producer Mike, does. Um, but yeah. Mike is on vacation. He's he's been busy the last few Mondays and he's not yeah. been uh not been with us. He's very much alive. I talked to him yesterday. Yeah. His hair uh, just needed a vacation. His hair is working hard and it needs a rest. Yeah. So he's the one that usually does all that. Uh but since that has fallen uh onto yeah. my onto my uh, uh hands, um, you know, mistakes are gonna happen. Things are gonna get missed. <laughs> If that's the only thing that gets missed in this show today, then I feel like I'm I'm bad. You're doing great. I'm doing, You're doing great. great. I'm doing great. <laughs> uh, uh, so we have we have a a, a great show today. Very I'm excited. Very about, excited about all the stuff that's uh, uh, all the stuff that's going to happen in the show today. Doing great. Doing great. Lots of guests. You're going to love it. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, we have a new segment we're going to be uh, premiering today with our uh, very special guest, uh, Mr. Sam Ike, uh, who will be uh, uh, calling in and doing a little movie review for us today. Yes. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just if really you've got movie questions, he's got answers. <laughs> We didn't clear a question and answer. We didn't clear a Q&A with him, but I'm sure he well, would be fine with it. The questions are in your head. There are things that you've always been wondering. <laughs> and he's going to know. He'll just know. And he'll just he'll say just them. Know. He'll just say them. Uh, uh, let's see. Let's uh, let's start out with our our uh, our fact of the day. Yes, uh, please. Here's our little here's our little on this day uh, factoid. Uh, on this day, uh, back in 1979, another 19 last week was 1979 too. 1979 was a good year. Uh, uh, Star Trek: The Motion Picture uh, premiered. Wow! Uh, the very first Star Trek movie uh, came out. Incredible. Starring the incomparable William Shatner and Leonard Nimoy. Oh, uh, just those two. Those two. Ugh. <laughs> Am I right? Uh, if you haven't checked right. out their their albums, you should check out both uh, the William Shatner album, uh, met one of the many, uh, and the I think Leonard Nimoy put out an album as well. So uh, definitely check those out. And a singing album. A singing album, Yes. Leonard Absolutely. Nimoy? Yeah. Uh, uh, I don't... Jeez, I don't know what it's called. This uh, is the best news. I know, right? Uh, uh, Leonard Nimoy uh, 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 album. It's called... Um, oh, there's so many. Oh, my goodness. I didn't realize this. Uh, uh, here's his discography. Uh, Leonard Nimoy presents Mr. Spock's Music from Outer Space, uh, Two Sides of Leonard Nimoy, The Way I Feel, The Touch of Leonard Nimoy, and The New World of Leonard Nimoy. These are all the uh, the albums that he, I'm that he released. I'm so excited. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Oh, not to mention also, Bella, good morning. Uh, uh, Nimoy recorded the Boston Museum of Science Omni Theater uh, curtain speech. It's uh, very good. Yeah, been very in Boston amazing. six years, never been to the Museum of Science. Uh, and I'm not going to be going to the Museum of Science anytime soon. Uh, next year. Yeah, next year, maybe. Maybe. Uh, <laughs> so uh, that is uh, the, uh, the fact of the day. Today is also... Uh, very excited to be on brand today. Uh, today is National Illinois Day. National Illinois Day. Absolutely. I did not make this up. This is an actual thing. It is Illinois Day. Illinois. Uh, There's more to us than Chicago. 
can I tell you, I have some facts about Illinois. If you, if Please, you'd like, yes. uh, uh, I would love to tell you those facts. Uh, let's see here. Um, um, here's a good one. Uh, uh, Illinois, uh, let's see. There's so many facts. Uh, the ice cream sundae originated in Evanston, Illinois. Of course it did. Uh, yeah. Um, Let's see. This is all uh, according to uh, HuffPost.com, uh, too. This is not any sort of Illinois website. Um, <laughs> They're not just hiding see. themselves up. Uh, Morton, Illinois, is the pumpkin capital of the world. The uh, pumpkin capital? Yeah, more of the than 85% whole world? of packaged pumpkin comes from Morton, Illinois. 85? Mm -hmm. uh, Popeye was invented at Illinois, uh, the character Popeye. Uh, was created where? Oh, where was it? Uh, Chester, Illinois. And this is incredible. Uh, yeah. And this is going to go into our, our uh, trivia question uh, for the day. Uh, this uh, delicious spongy treat was invented in Schiller Park, Illinois, on April 6th, 1930, by Canadian baker uh, James Alexander Duar. Uh, name that treat. Name that. Treat. So James we'll, Alexander Duar. Yeah. What a fancy baker man. <laughs> what a fancy baker man. <laughs> uh, yeah. So uh yeah. Celebrate uh celebrate the land of Lincoln. Yeah. Also, Lincoln is from there. <laughs> well, Lincoln <laughs> is not like they say he's the land of Lincoln, but he's actually he's from like Kentucky. But he 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 came up through Illinois, and his first one of his first jobs uh, was in like his first like political uh, office was held in uh, Illinois. He was, um, I believe, the postmaster. Um, yeah, he was the oh. postmaster in New Salem, Illinois. Did you know that he had a high pitched voice? Who Abraham Lincoln? Yes. I'd, I'd never heard him speak, uh, so I missed all his. Yeah, well, how did you know that? How do you know that? Oh, because I read about him. I read so there. I've done, and also, I think Daniel Day Lewis tried to imitate it in that biopic they did. I never actually watched that, but um, I've done a bunch of random reading about presidents. Mm -hmm. uh, my favorite source material is. How to Fight Presidents by Dan O'Brien. Highly recommend. Each chapter is about a president. And because Dan O'Brien was like, well, if I can't become president, I should at least be able to defend myself against them. <laughs> so he points out all their strengths and weaknesses. Uh, heads up, you're not going to want to fight Teddy Roosevelt or Inc. Abraham Lincoln. No. those Abraham Lincoln was very, very strong. Like he was, yes. he cut wood. He was chopping down trees with one swing. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, Dan O'Brien getting some getting some love uh, uh, from Caitlin in the in yeah, the chat. He's there. incredible. He put a lot of content out on um, on Cracked.com before it got sold to. I don't remember who it got sold to, but it's not as good anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it's just facts. It's just uh, it's just fact. Uh, uh, well, I'm very like so. So there it is. Uh, there it is. Uh, there is our uh, fact of the day and our uh, trivia question. So think on that, and we'll give you the answer that to the to that at the end of the show. Uh, all right. Well, I think it's time to bring up our first guest. Very excited to have this uh, gentleman on the show. Uh, uh, wonderful, wonderful find by uh, the amazing, our amazing producer, Rachel. Uh, thank you so much, Rachel, for booking our guests on this show. Uh, uh, this is uh, uh, this man is an author. He's got a book coming out uh, next year uh, called The Ballad of Perilous Graves. Uh, let's welcome to the show uh, Alex Jennings. Hello, Alex. Good morning. Hi. Good morning, everybody. Welcome. So, uh, your tell us a little bit about your book. Yeah, let's. We're just we just Open dive right broad into question. Like, we, um, okay. I, I was reading a little bit about it and how. So it's based in New Orleans, yeah. Yeah, uh, it's kind of a black exploitation Pippi Longstocking story, where. Um, 
that. Nine of the songs that keep magic going in the city have escaped to manifest around town as colorful street people. And uh, my Pippi character and her friends have to capture them and bring them back before the city ceases to exist. So it's I am of, uh, so glad that I didn't look up what this book was about until you came on the show because that <laughs> that blows my mind. That sounds so amazing. Oh well, thank you. I hope I hope people like it. I worked on it a long time, and uh, you know it's it's sort of a a love letter to my family and to New Orleans and its music and culture and people. Um, you know, because I've made my home here for several years. And, uh, you know, before I came here, I didn't really have a place that I called home. Home was just my family. Yeah. That's a, like New Orleans is such an amazing, is such an amazing uh, city. Like there's just so much, so much there. What, what kind of inspired you? Like when you, when you first got to New Orleans, what kind of inspired you to write like a book, a story like this? Well, I moved to New Orleans uh, the summer after Hurricane Katrina um, and the failure of the federal levies. Mm. And um, I heard and read a lot of stories about children having to come home to New Orleans without their parents so that they could start attending school and things like that. And uh, what that made me think of immediately was like Pippi Longstocking stories from when I was a kid and how she lived in a big house um, just by herself and with her horse and would go adventuring whenever she felt like it with no one to tell her what to do. So those two ideas kind of met in my mind. And, you know, once I started researching like the history of New Orleans music, like at times it seemed like the book wrote itself. Oh, that's that's amazing when when a when a project can take on the life of its own like that. Uh, uh, so now you mentioned that this book is um, is is coming out in uh, um, next year, most likely, uh, uh, yeah. but it has been picked up to be published. So, but the book is not like the book is is done, but not done. Talk to us about the process that you're going right. Through. Okay, so um, when my agent uh, told me that this publisher. Orbit Books wanted to do the book. Um, you know, I uh, met with my editor, Nivia Evans, and talked with her about how to make this novel as impactful as possible. And, uh, you know, she gave me some tips on things that she thought that it might be a good idea to add to the story, but very broadly, you know. And uh, so they asked me to expand the book by quite a bit. And uh, so it went from be it went from being this like pretty slight urban fantasy romp to like this work that kind of underpins my entire career to this point, and uh, just gives me all the room I need to say exactly what I want to say. And I'm terribly excited about it. Oh man, yeah, because you you had the you had the the it was basically like in your mind it was done uh, when you you know gave it up uh, to mm -hmm. to your to your publisher and then they came back and how much did they want you to add? Like, what were they? Uh, she said between like 10 and 20,000 words, uh, which is you oh. know, quite a bit. Oh, yeah. yeah. Just, 20, That's a little, just like 20,000 words. It's fine. <laughs> uh, yeah. If I were in my college years, I would wait until the night before it was due. Uh, to, you know, <laughs> oh God. About 2 a.m. Oh no. You cannot. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I've been working on the new draft for months now, and uh, you know I hope to have it turned in around the first of the year. And I'm just like I'm so excited because like yeah. in, the, in the process of writing the book, like there was so much material that I felt I had to leave out to keep it streamlined. Mm -hmm. um, so mm -hmm. I could go back and like include some of those ideas and characters and stuff. And yeah, well, and typically in the writing process and the editing process, it's a lot of like cutting things down and like, you know, get rid of this much. And, and so like to have a book where it's like, you've got a little bit more room. That's so, that's really exciting. And to like yeah, be able to flush that world out. It's uh, a rare, a rare opportunity for your first novel to be able to do that. 
Ah, oh, that's that's so amazing. A uh, uh, question from the chat: What's something you found uh, during your research that surprised you? Uh, I mean, I'm sure there were a number of things that surprised you, but maybe something. I mean, there that, were there were a lot of things. Like one of the things that surprised me was just how influential New Orleans music was even before the birth of jazz. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like before that, like in the in the 17 and 1800s, there was this ballroom culture here where people would go to these ballrooms, like walking through the muddy streets, like gathering up their skirts and having these like huge wigs piled on their heads. And I mean, I just seeing that image of the city is so surprising to me. But the city itself has this almost bizarre sort of timelessness to it. Mm -hmm. so like when you go back and look at descriptions of the city and the goings on here um, in like 1850, like you'll see a lot of the same things that are still happening today. It's that was a huge surprise. Wow. Uh, do you see that? Um, do you see maybe uh, this character in the book having? having uh like are, are you planning maybe other books after this with this character or uh is this going to be like a you know because i think didn't pippi longstocking have like a series of books or was it just one book oh yeah yeah there, there were a lot of uh, pippi longstocking books um i i'm leaving the door open for other stories with this character uh i i'm trying to leave it all on the table with this hmm. book and uh, not plan too far ahead after that, uh, but you know, there's always there's always room. There's always room, I, especially since like this is a book for adults and not for kids mm. necessarily. So mm -hmm. I've always wanted to see what Pippi Longstocking would be like if she got older, if she had like a family of her own, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Oh, fantastic. Uh, uh, what is another, another, there's Rachel does such, such an amazing job, like coming up with these questions. Like, I, I wish she would just give me these questions, but she likes to put them in the <laughs> chat so she can, so she can have ownership of them, which she absolutely should. Uh, uh, uh but, uh, she also asked, what is something you had to leave out that was hard? Was there something, was there anything in the book that you like, were like, oh man, I don't want to leave this out, but I've got to. Um, well, yeah, honestly, like I used a lot of real New Orleans songs. Like the book is a musical, basically. And uh, so I used a lot of the music of Professor Longhair um, and some other New Orleans musicians and like clearing song lyrics for use in a piece of writing is like just a really pernicious task. So I've had to go back through and write all my own songs. Which oh. is, I mean, it's it's a crazy process. Sometimes it happens yes. super quickly, and sometimes it's painstaking. Wow! So you're writing like you're you're taking like songs that uh, already existed, and you're you're kind of uh, 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 creating a, a different song in that vein. Yeah, like what I'm generally going for when I replace a, a song uh, by somebody like Little Richard mm -hmm. um, is I, I try to get the same basic feel of that song, and like I come up with a with a melody for it, and um, I try to like address the same emotions, but with lyrics of my own that I don't have to pay through the nose for. <laughs> right. Uh, so you mentioned that you mentioned that this is this is a musical. Like, do you do you see do you ever see like maybe a stage adaptation of this of this story being done? Have you thought about that? <laughs> you know, honestly, I have never thought about that. But now that you mention it, that would be fantastic. You heard it here first. <laughs> Breaking. Uh, uh, that's that's amazing. Uh, uh, I would definitely like. Have you listened to? Um, Hades Town, uh, the the musical Hades Town, uh, uh, yeah. like that that kind of music, like that kind of, that kind of feel, like it 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 seems like that would be a really cool, like uh, just the like the Pippi Longstocking kind of story, like told in that kind of uh, way would just oh that would be so cool. <laughs> would be like, one of my main inspirations for the book was The Wiz, 
So I'm oh, all very about. cool. Oh, amazing. Yeah. Uh, so this is is this your? You said this is your first novel, but I'm assuming mm -hmm. this isn't the first. This isn't the first thing you've written. Uh, what are what are some other things that you've that you've worked on uh, uh, before this? Um, I had a book of short stories called. Uh, here I Come and Other Stories come out in 2012. Um, we're probably going to do a re-release of that, but it's still uh, available on Amazon, I believe. And, um, you know, I've, I've been putting various short stories and poems in uh, publications all over the country and um, some overseas as well. So I, uh, I had a lot of practice in the ramp up to this. Oh, and I... Um, I was doing a lot of nonfiction and editing for a uh, an online literary journal called Room 220. Um, so I have uh, some of my pop culture articles and things like that there. And it's called Room 220. Yeah, it's um, it's at Antenna Works. It's like a like this arts nonprofit down here called Antenna had a uh, an online literary journal for a while. And uh, so you can get there through their website. I have all the links on my website as well. So. Oh, fantastic. Okay. Uh, so you see uh, Alex's uh, website there, alexjennings.net. Uh, there you can get uh, all, all that uh, all that stuff. Fantastic. Uh, uh, any uh, So this is uh, – so you've got the book. It's coming out in, in – uh, you said uh, probably when again? Winter of – Ninth of winter of 2022, not 1922. <laughs> the winter of 1922. Uh, well, <laughs> we have been talking about time traveling, so maybe it's uh, true. It might happen. It uh, might. So, yeah, this upcoming novel. So, this is uh, you said it was urban fantasy, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. so is that is most of your writing sort of uh fantasy based or do you kind of shift between genres and and along with that like um what are some of your biggest like fantasy influences um i do i do shift between genres some but uh, a lot of it is science fiction fantasy and horror um my very biggest influence is probably octavia butler um meeting her changed my life as well as reading her work and uh, she actually told me to apply to the intensive SF writing workshop uh, Clarion West and uh, told me that if I applied I would get in and lo and behold that's exactly what happened so oh that's yeah, incredible major influence also um Cherie Renee Thomas who is about to take over editing the magazine of fantasy and science fiction amazing truly amazing uh victor laval author of the changeling and big machine um i love his work as well as um samuel r delaney china mieville and um musicians like champion jack dupree fantastic it's a good list it's a good list <laughs> <laughs> i love that you, you like i need to get i need to get all that written down on like i'm gonna have to rewatch this and like write those write those names down and just <laughs> create like a reading list for myself um because i yeah i haven't read any of those uh any of those authors uh so that's that's definitely something that i should I need to read more. I think I don't think like, <laughs> the pandemic has, <laughs> for some reason, the pandemic has put me all on screens and not on, not into like as much into books as much, uh, yeah. which we'll just start a hello world book club. I mean, <laughs> I mean, that's not a, that's not, not a, bad a bad idea. idea. So Alex, uh, um, Rachel has another question. What are, uh, oh. what are the aspects of someone's work that like make you such a super fan? Mm. Um, I think the things that are most important to me, especially in science fiction, fantasy, and horror, is how they illuminate real life and the way we live it and the emotions that we go through and process all the time. So that place where fantasy meets reality is super important to me. And so in like the science fiction of Octavia Butler, uh, that's a really important element. Same with like Victor Laval, 
Sheree uh, Renee Thomas and uh, mm -hmm. uh, Chesia Burke. And I just, like I love seeing science fiction and fantasy tropes used to comment on real life and like real concerns. Yeah, it kind of, by putting it in an alternate universe, it kind of gives it makes it a safe space to talk about some very uncomfortable things. Right. Yeah. Right. That's that's this, this is the second week in a row that 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 same uh, observation has been made, and I love that we had a we had a comic uh, writer uh, that was here last week that uh, uses his science fiction to do the very like that kind of that kind of thing. Ah, I love that. Uh, uh, awesome. Well, thank you, Alex, so much for joining us uh, uh, this morning and, and waking up early and and uh, <laughs> being here. Uh, check out uh, alexjennings.net uh, uh, for all, uh, all things Alex. Well, thank uh, you so much for having me. <laughs> absolutely. Have a wonderful rest of your have a wonderful rest of your morning, Alex. Take care. You too. Bye bye. Uh, uh, oh, so cool. It's, I'm so excited to read that book. That like that book is is going to be amazing. Like I can't awesome. I can't wait. Yeah. Uh, uh, definitely. Uh, I definitely should should start reading more. Uh, and that is, that should be right there on the on the top of the list there. Uh, 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 so it's a good show today. I'm very I'm very nervous Great about show. the show today. We're hyped. We're hyped today. I'm almost too hyped. I'm on my second <laughs> cup of coffee already and I'm just What kind of coffee are you drinking, man? <laughs> <laughs> Chloe, you're so good about getting those promos going. Um, <laughs> so this is in fact it is Red Barn Coffee, uh, which is Excellent. one of our amazing sponsors. Uh, here on Hello World, really our only sponsor. Uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, you can go to uh, redbarncoffeeroasters.com, put in your order, type in the code Hello World, uh, you get 15% off your coffee. Red uh, Barn Coffee Roasters, they're our only sponsor. Thank you. And Chloe. <laughs> Chloe's working on her tagline, uh, yeah. on her tagline writing. Well, and we'll hit a good one at some point. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I thought that one was pretty, was <laughs> pretty strong. Good. It's pretty good. Uh, uh, something else that's kind of fun that's all that's kind of a kind of a plug, maybe a spot, not really a sponsor, but 2MB is doing an artist collab. We've started doing these artist collaborations, which is very, very cool. It's our way to kind of work with local artists and and try to uh, help support local artists. And uh, uh, we've got an amazing uh, design that was uh, uh, done by uh, Rebecca Bishop who's been on the show. Yeah. She's been on the show. Uh, she's the, um, she's the doodler. Uh, she's one of the doodlers <laughs> in uh, once upon a doodle, uh, which is an, a, a really fun improv show that we have on Sundays here uh, on the channel uh, where we, there's someone live drawing and then uh, improvisers basically it's like watching a, watching a cartoon uh, be created like in front of you, which is really kind of, which yeah. is a really cool kind of concept. But uh, uh, Rebecca has created this shirt and I just want to show this shirt here real quick. Uh, let me pull it up here. Uh, this is the uh, Breadinator. Oh so, my gosh. Yeah. So this uh, is uh, available on our, uh, our T Public uh, uh, site here. That's and, so beautiful. I yeah. love that. Yeah. So that is our, our first collab. And uh, this is a great way to support artists. We're, uh, we're, you know, giving some of the money. Uh, we're splitting the money between the channel and the artist. Uh, so uh, we're, this, is a, this is a wonderful way uh, to support artists right now. Uh, so uh, let's get a, I'll get you a, a link here. Put it in the chat. So if you click on this, it might take you away from the from the show. So don't do don't do that or click it and make sure it opens in another window. Uh, yeah, right click there. it. Right click it. Yeah, absolutely. Or copy uh, and paste. Or copy There's options. and paste. There's so, options. So many options. Uh, let's see. 
Fantastic. So yeah, go get uh, get merch. There's also a lot get of other Redinator. kind of uh, 2MB Studios merch on that site that you can go and get. Um, you can get it in shirt form. You can get it in sticker form. You can get wow. these mugs. I mean, we we got merch for days. Merch for days. And there's it's just so much more merch on the way. So keep keep a lookout uh, for that. All right. Time for our next segment. Very excited to have this next gentleman on the show. Uh, uh, when we were approached by Sam Ike to do a movie review segment on Hello World, um, I had my doubts. <laughs> uh, I was very excited <laughs> to have Sam uh, be a part of the show. Uh, so uh, please, wherever you are right now, make some noise for the incomparable Sam Ike. Hey. Hey. Hi, Sam. Whoa, this is great. I've never, <laughs> um, I just got this. Um, all right, so uh, I, I'm going to do a movie review, and I'm going to play some clips from this film. Okay. Uh, but I just want to say that usually when I do this, I do this on my phone, and I, I just got this laptop, and I don't know how. So I'm going to put the laptop towards the TV. Uh, <laughs> Sam. <laughs> I uh, haven't figured out. I haven't Good figured out how to do this. I fi I haven't figured out how to do this without flipping the camera. So uh, this is uh, for future reference, Sam. If you let me know what clips you want to play, I can play them on the screen. Yeah, uh, I completely believe you and know that you are capable of doing this. <laughs> but when you told me there was an easier way, I said no, no, <laughs> <laughs> no, sir. No, sir. <laughs> uh, this is what I, I love about this bit already. Why would I ever do this in a way that was going to be easier? <laughs> <laughs> makes sense. I should have wow. known. I should have been like, you know what? This is a Sam Ike bit. Uh, he's like, it's a, it's. We. I just sit back and watch. I'm even going to do this for you, Sam. I'm going to make you uh, bigger, uh, so people can really, so people can really enjoy this. Yeah. Um, but I still want to be on screen for this, just so I can <laughs> enjoy. Because I'm very excited about the movie. Uh, you chose for a uh, Monday morning uh, uh, lighthearted <laughs> morning show. <laughs> um, all right. So during this quarantine, I've been watching like a ton of movies. And a movie I recently saw uh, <laughs> over the quarantine was called Human Stain. And Human Stain is a 2004 drama starring Nicole Kidman and Anthony Hopkins, Sir Anthony Hopkins. Hmm. And in this movie, Anthony Hopkins plays a college professor at a prestigious New England college. Hmm. And he gets in trouble uh, for saying something at this prestigious New England college. And I'm going to play the clip of what he says. Uh-oh. Oh, here we go. <laughs> on on, <laughs> on Sam's TV. Is this work? This yeah. is, I can see it. It's great. Yeah. Right. Oh, look, he's fairly young in this. <laughs> Imaginative literature of Europe begins, and that is why 3,000 years later we are going to begin there today. Mrs. Cummings, Stacey Cummings, can you tell us? Still not here. Okay, Mr. Thomas, William Thomas, see here. We're five weeks into the semester, and I haven't even laid eyes on these folks. Can anyone tell me, do these people exist? Or are they spooks? Were you aware, Professor Silk, that Tracy Cummings and William Thomas were African Americans? How could I be here? All right, so Anthony Hawkins gets in trouble for saying spooks. All right. And, uh, uh, which is a, a derogatory term to African Americans, in case anyone was wondering. Because mm. I understand, because some people thought, because Anthony Hopkins was making a claim that he meant ghosts. Uh, <laughs> this movie gets crazier. So, <laughs> <laughs> so then, uh, about five minutes later in the movie, Anthony Hopkins' wife died. Um, and then, <laughs> and then about 10 minutes after, uh, Anthony Hopkins has sex with Nicole Kidman. 
Uh, in, be in between wow. that, in between that, Anthony Hawkins gets drunk with Gary Sinise and they dance <laughs> 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 and talk about the and talk about uh, the Clinton impeachment. Um, it's a wild, wild film, and <laughs> there's a there's a big twist uh, later in the movie. And do either of you guys want to guess what this twist is in the film? Oh, I'm I'm terrified to to make a to make any sort of assumption about this film. Uh, <laughs> I I don't think I even if, I don't think my wildest guess would even come close. Oh, but I think I know what it is. I, I think we were talking about it a little bit before the show, and I think I know what it is, which makes me even more uncomfortable. Uh, like this movie already makes me uncomfortable. Like I'm already, uh, I'm already. <laughs> <laughs> but it just gets it's gonna get worse, I think. <laughs> so this is the twist. <laughs> <laughs> what you find out later in this film is that um Anthony Hopkins is black. Anthony Hopkins is a black guy and he was pretending to be Jewish. Or he was half black and he was pretending to be Jewish because he was so light skinned and they show they go back and they show clips of him in like the 1950s played by Wentworth Miller, who is half black, um, the dude from Prison Break. They have him playing Anthony Hopkins when he was younger and passing himself off as, uh, uh, as, as I think, 100% Jewish. And, <laughs> and, and that's... And that is like that's the that's the thing that is the last thirty minutes of the movie is my is, is like forty five minutes of this movie is, is that and I've seen this I didn't see I didn't even I knew about this movie I didn't know what it was really about um, oh my god I didn't watch until like April and I think since April I've seen it maybe twenty times it's every because every. <laughs> Every time I watch it, I go, no, the, the twist in the movie is not Anthony Hopkins is black, right? And then and then every time I watch it, it's still that. It's still <laughs> like maybe you're I missing something. Like maybe if you just watch it one more time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, here's, um, I'm like, no way is that. <laughs> and this is the thing about Anthony Hopkins is that this is not the only movie where he he – plays somewhat he plays an ethnicity that he's not like in Zorro yeah he's Zorro. He's, he's Spanish in Zorro which is not he's Hispanic yeah I forgot about that which he's yeah it's like oh my god I forgot all about Zorro holy shit oh my god rewatch it it holds up Sam, that's the movie we want you to talk about uh, the next time you're on is the original Zorro with... Uh... And Catherine Zeta-Jones, Zeta also Jones. not Hispanic at all. Oh, man. Yeah, that was with Catherine Zeta-Jones, too. Whoa. Oh, my God. I forgot all about that. Movie. But Antonio Banderas was in it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah he Banderas. played the main Zorro. Of the yeah. three title characters. <laughs> At least they got Zorro, right? Like <laughs> Well, Anthony Hopkins was Zorro first. Yeah, uh, that's true. <laughs> so he took up the mantle after, you know, a white man was Zorro. Uh, uh, thank goodness. <laughs> uh, but, Lau, what I love about Human Stain is that, like, they cast Anthony Hopkins. You know what I mean? Like, like, because, like, I understand, because, like, the movie's based off of this book. So like I I'm I'm sure there's a lot of other things in the book that I like would not translate into the film. So but in in the movie they cast Anthony Hopkins and it's like I just wonder like who was not available that they were considering cuz like this is 2004 so the choices were like it was like Bob Saget it was like <laughs> Maybe like get like like I who Sir Ian McKellen? Like who would have been who would have been slightly better and even off, more off than who was the number one pick? 
Yeah. <laughs> like I would have preferred Alan Rolling Rickman Stone. would have been a, would have been an odd choice. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Sir Patrick Stewart. Uh, like if you wanted to get another Sir. Uh, and you know, the other thing that's so crazy about this movie is that we we've just been talking about this, and Ed Harris is like in this movie, and he's like the third. Like he has a whole plot line. He murders Anthony Hopkins in this movie, and and that's and, and like like, like the thing is the thing that's so amazing is that it's not just that Anthony Hopkins is is black. It's it's that the majority of this film is about Anthony Hopkins fucking Nicole Kidman and Ed Harris being mad about it. Like, that's what the movie's really about for about an hour. <laughs> so, <laughs> is this movie six hours long? Like, I'm taking the I'm taking the times that you're giving us, Sam, and I'm adding them up. This movie is like Ten Commandments long. Let me let me check. I, I, I it, It's not that. It's like, yeah, it's an hour 50. <laughs> oh wow! So it's it's like there's it's a long time. Uh, oh man, it's amazing! It's amazing! Like it's it's I I watch it and I'm like, how has not how has nobody seen this? Like, but then I'm like, I, I didn't know about this either. So when I when I first saw the cover, I thought it was like like. Like, let me see if I can pull up the cover of it. Yeah, how did this pop up? Where did you, oh, I've got it right here. Did you decide to watch this? Well, I was looking, just scrolling through like films, you know, just it looks, I thought it was a ghost movie. Like, cause I don't watch trailers. So I'm like, this looks like a ghost <laughs> film. Like, yeah. right? Like, I thought it was like, what lies beneath? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. You know, you like, I had no like. Also, like he's like, how do you like? You know what I mean? Like, so when I started watching, I was like, whoa! <laughs> <laughs> like, that was my reaction the whole time. <laughs> I'm loving the zoom stuff. I'm just carrying my laptop right now. <laughs> uh, uh, wow, Sam! Thank you. I mean, you picked a doozy for your first for your first one. <laughs> Uh, I already can't wait uh, for you to come back and uh, show us other uh, amazing finds in the Sam Ike quarantine film uh, studio. studio. Yeah, no, thanks for having me, guys. This is fun. Uh, uh, thank you very much, Sam. Uh, have a great rest of your morning. Yeah, you too, man. <laughs> Whoo! Human stain. Uh, six <laughs> out of ten stars on uh, IMDb. Uh, check it. Oh, that was great. Check it out. Or don't. Uh, or don't. Uh, honestly, or just, just let Sam talk to you about it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, anytime now I feel like watching that movie, I'm just going to pull up this clip of Sam talking <laughs> about the movie, and then I'll be like, okay, I don't need to watch this movie. That's it. I got the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh <laughs> Incredible. Uh, I know how David Thomas feels now on uh, the rehash. I don't know if you watched the rehash, but Tookie uh, Kavanaugh hosts an amazing show on Fridays called uh, uh, the rehash. And she makes David Thomas watch uh, uh, just truly awful films. Uh, and uh, they're just bad. And, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's definitely worth, worth the, uh, worth the check. Shout out to the rehash. Absolutely. Shout out to the Riage. <sighs> okay. Well, let's we're moving, we're moving right along. We were right we're, along. We're trucking right along here. Uh, which we should probably <laughs> slow down a little bit because you know we've still got a lot of show to to go through here, but that's okay because uh, uh our next guests are uh, uh fantastic. I'm very excited to chat about uh some some stuff that's stuff that's coming up uh here on the channel uh yeah. so uh we're going to bring on uh, uh ad and sophie from surge good morning good, good, morning. Morning. good morning good morning good morning thanks for having us oh thanks for, thanks for waking up Hello. early and and showing up and and uh, hanging out in the in the green room uh how are the snacks good pretty good yeah yeah yeah, yeah i like the the donut holes Mm -hmm. mm. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're welcome for the. Went a little yeah, we knew that, that you would. That's why yeah. we got. Well, that's why we got you your own box, D. We know. Uh, uh, <laughs> that was in my ear, so I'm glad you met that. that <laughs> Uh, uh, so, uh, uh, what, let's talk about what brings the two of you, uh, onto the show, uh, this morning. So, uh, you two are part of an organization called Surge Boston. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, talk to us and tell us, uh, uh, tell the people at home, uh, uh, what Surge is. Yeah. Um, so Surge is, uh, it's an acronym. It's, it's short for, uh, showing up for racial justice, Boston. And um, it's part of a, a national nationwide network um, with a lot of local chapters that um, uses uh, community organizing, uh, mobilization, um, and education to uh, organize um, partic- or organize white people to be part of the multiracial movement for racial justice. And so, uh, here in Boston, um, we uh, we do. Uh, com- through through that community organizing education and relationships uh, to um, our partner organizations, we um, do work around around issues of racial justice um, in the Boston area. So um, ultimately, um, we work in solidarity and and in support of uh, of organizations led by people of color in the Boston area around issues like uh, housing justice and prison abolition and uh, and public education um, and yeah and that's sort of uh, Adi I don't know if you have any <laughs> anything else to add about Surge. Uh- Surge is fantastic. I mean, I I think I'd do a general kind of um, plug for it. I think it's Mm -hmm. a really uh, great organization um, for people at very different um, places along the spectrum of Mm -hmm. social justice work. Um, So for people who have been doing the work for for a very long time, uh, there, there are a lot of you know, action and education opportunities uh, mm-hmm. within Surge. It's like this really kind of um, uh, the. There are so many different groups within Surge that there mm-hmm. are a million places to find. Um, so it can be also tough to find your place. So for people who might not know how to find their way uh, in a social justice organization and and what they want to do, we also have um, these local groups, and I. Forget their name, Sophie. <laughs> Local, like our partner groups. The the the, the, the new member groups. Um, oh, base groups. Base yeah, they're base yeah. groups. So mm-hmm. basically, if racial justice, social justice, working on the community is something you want to do, and you're a white person uh, mm-hmm. looking to grow in that, but you're newer to it, um, mm-hmm. you can connect to Surge through a base group, and you'll connect with people in your area uh, to kind of um, ramp yourself up. And oh, to be cool. to be clear, when we say uh, it's from the view that I think that many many white people are are yeah, have been awakened, uh, especially recently. That it's the view that racism is ultimately a white problem, and we have to address it, and you know, in our own communities and our lives, um, but always in solidarity and with the leadership of Black and Brown and Indigenous communities. So that's sort of what we say, and. And it connects us to a wider community that is multiracial. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's fantastic! How did how did the two of you uh, get involved in this? How did uh, like what were your kind of comings into this organization? Um, so I uh, I've been working uh, for years in a, a lot of different campaign organizations. I worked uh, for Greenpeace for a while, and then for uh, an anti-corporate organization called um, Corporate Accountability, anti-corporate, but a corporate accountability group. Uh, and uh, got frustrated with myself for not having done anything directly to address systemic racism. And uh, it came to a head for me in the 2014 through 15, 16 period where um, all the police violence started to really become more and more visible online for me. I I think (laughs) that was when it it became more and more visible for me. Uh, And so I went to one large meeting and it kind of snowballed from there uh, in 2016 for me. 
Yeah, it, it is a similar process where I was working, um, I was doing uh, youth work and youth organizing in Boston and similarly um, felt, uh, felt sort of frust frustrated by, um, by sort of that work and, not, and how it was not really addressing systemic systemic racism and uh, systemic injustices. And similarly, what, like th through the 2013, 2014, 2015 uh, process, that led me to, I think, probably attending the same, the same meeting at D. <laughs> uh, D went it yeah. was so big. But, but a D and I have also like not, not, it's a, so it's a, you can be in different groups within it and we have mm -hmm. not crossed paths until until uh this this fundraiser that we're we're organizing that yeah. we're organizing with you with with you guys yeah what a wonderful <laughs> so your segue is so much better than mine uh i need to <laughs> i need to get some some segue segue training from you uh um so we are 2mb studios is partnering up with uh surge to host a a benefit uh this sunday uh, uh, remind me the times. I'm 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 one of the co-hosts. I should know what time it is. Uh, but six thirty to eight thirty. Six thirty to eight thirty. Uh, this coming uh, this coming Sunday. Uh, yeah, talk to us about talk to us about that event. Yes. Yeah, so every year uh, we do a fundraiser for our fiscal sponsor, which is uh, this organization called Community Change Incorporated or CCI. And uh, CCI has been doing uh, racial justice work in Boston since, since 1968. Since um, and so they've they've been sort of uh, a sort of like almost incubator of education and leadership for a lot of the uh, racial justice movements in Boston. And they were uh, yeah the initial supporter to help get Surge started. And um, and they are. Uh, yeah, they are led by like a, an amazing, amazing team um, led by Shay Stewart Boulay and Myrna Morales, and um, yeah, they're just they're really they're really fantastic. They've been very supportive of us. Um, they so they do a lot of uh, education work, um, uh, not only in Boston but throughout throughout the country. Education work, sort of some of that some of that mobilization work, some of that um, some of that. Uh, yeah, again, so yes, through, through through supporting Surge, some of that community organizing work. Um, and we're we're really excited to support them. So and we also felt um that, you know, it's not been the best year. Uh so we're really it's a lower year. Yeah. I don't, I don't what, are know. what are you talking about? So there's like been this thing going on. Just uh, just just look it up. Look it up. Um, so it's been a <laughs> difficult year. So we also wanted to have an opportunity to have have people just laugh and and uh, and have fun and um, and not not think think about think about serious issues, but not not in the same way that that um, that we usually do, which can be which can be draining. Yeah. One thing I love about what what your when you when you came to us with this with this uh, uh, idea to do this fundraiser, you were like, we want to raise money, but we also want to pay artists, which mm -hmm. is huge. Uh, like it, especially now, because you know stand-ups mm -hmm. uh, and storytellers and you know are and you know actors, performers, like we've we've lost our livelihood, kind of. <laughs> you know, I mean. Yeah. It's coming back little, little by little by little. But I mean, with snow on the ground, it's hard to to do outdoor outdoor events that are uh, that are safe. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, so the fact that you're like, not only are we going to raise money for this organization, but we're also going to pay our pay our uh, performers and pay you know uh, pay the people that are that are, are giving us their time. That's that's huge. And I that's think that. Yeah, that's in line with CCI's work and values is to to pay to pay artists for their time and and particularly we wanted this to, uh, as an opportunity to uh, to spotlight majority majority wise uh, performers of color mm -hmm. comedians of color and pay them pay them for their time and their art. Yeah, it's it's something that I've really valued um, about Surge uh, is. 
kind of the thoroughness, I feel like, of our accountability, or at least as, as I've seen about like, you know, as white folks ourselves that are hosting this event, that are bringing performers of color on um, to say like, we are supporting you and showcasing you, but we're not here to, uh, <laughs> to, to only take is is the hope um uh but to to share and 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 show real gratitude for that work and create relationships too so it's like it's a, it's mutual yeah 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 that's and and segueing oh we have what? i i has so been insane. training you on segues I've I've just spent the last few weeks talking a lot with Sophie, so I've gotten better. Uh, <laughs> just by osmosis, right? It's, <laughs> it's the thing about our lineup, which I am blown away by, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. including the incomparable and totally unpredictable Sam Ike. Oh, yeah, I'm excited uh, that Sam's doing the show. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I realized that while he was talking, I was like, "Oh, we have him." <laughs> It's, uh, it's a really excited. incredible lineup. A lot of people in a very small amount of time uh, are showing up for us and, and helping out. Um, Sam Ike is, is in there. Tookie, also another mm -hmm. 2MB personality. Yeah, Tookie uh, and I are actually going to be co-hosting the event, which mm -hmm. I'm very, uh, very mm -hmm. excited about. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Josh Gondelman, uh, a pretty yeah. major... Uh, uh, majorly accomplished fellow who came out of Boston uh, and then made modern Seinfeld on Twitter and then, <laughs> and then wrote for uh, John Oliver and Jesus and Mary. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He um, was on, um, he came on to uh, Kelly McFarland's show, Genuine Nonsense, and, and chatted just about kind of the process of him like working directly with John Oliver and the This Week uh, Tonight. Uh, uh, staff and just how, like John Oliver, I guess is just he's like he's no nonsense, mm -hmm. which is you know for someone who is so 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 funny, like mm -hmm. he. But I mean the way that he does his stuff is very you know red. So it's like it's no bullshit. It's get the get you know let's let's get it, make it happen. That's how he makes those essays, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean. <laughs> The, the 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 meter and the like the speed at which he talks right and still all the the commentary that he's getting out like you, you there's no <laughs> there's no room for for error there <laughs> you know you got to have your facts right if you're gonna Do come at people does. that hard yeah uh, uh, fantastic. Well, look, who else do we have? Uh, who else do we have uh, on the on the docket? Oh, so like so many great folks. We have uh, um, Kendra Dossie who has a show on th on Thursday nights. They have a show. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, left uh, left night. Left uh, night. Is, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, pop culture through a Marxist lens, which is great. <laughs> Love it. Warms my heart. <laughs> <laughs> no punches pulled on that show. I love no it. No so punches. Much. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Rosanna Cornette, uh, who um, I, did, I don't know if she got her comedy start in Boston, but she did a lot of amazing stuff here and is out in LA. Um, she's got a sketch that we're including. Oh, very cool. Um, awesome. uh, and I haven't seen Rosanna in forever. So it'll be very cool. Uh, mm -hmm. Very cool to see, uh, see her on the, on the show. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh, Shell Gilliam and Shiana Nimashan are uh, doing an improv set. Michelle uh, is from Milwaukee and then was playing out in Boston for a while doing a ton of improv. Mm -hmm. And she has recently started a theater. She started an improv theater in Milwaukee during the quarantine. During a pandemic. Yeah. yeah. And and it's ridiculously successful. Like it's it's doing it's doing very well. Like I'm seeing stuff all over uh, social media about it. So uh, uh, also yeah. guest uh, former guest on the show. Um, yeah. Big fan of the and, show. And they, they both have also uh, been doing a ton over these last few months uh, addressing uh, inequities and representation issues and inclusion uh, challenges, to say the least, in comedy and improv. Uh, and it, it, that community has just thrived 
uh, in this environment and I think connected in, in new ways that is gonna be really good for comedy period. Yeah. Um, so huge shouts to, to them for their work. Yeah. Uh, I love that this show is not just going to be stand up. It's going to be improv. It's going to be, we're gonna have some storytelling uh, in it. Uh, may, uh, do we have any music? I mean, we mm -hmm. may we may have, have, to have yeah. a little bit of music. Yeah. So it's just going to be it's going to be fantastic. It's going to yeah. be a show not to miss. Um, and uh, we're going to be raising money for an amazing cause. Uh, yes. So uh, uh, it's your chance to to step up and and have some have some fun and really uh, kind of uh, like I said, donate to donate to an amazing cause. Uh, what's the what's the fundraising goal? that we're, that we're going to try to hit on in our two hours. So the fundraising goal, um, I think, I think we had originally talked about, about, uh, $2,000 mm -hmm. and we were trying for the fundraiser overall. Um, we were, we were trying to get to, uh, 85, 8,500. Mm -hmm. Um, and we're very, very close to that. But if we go over, that'll just be more money for them to be able to do their programming. Cause yeah. again, uh, because of the the they do amazing work, but they're uh, more of a grassroots, very uh, local organization, so they're not getting the same funding as like a giant nonprofit. Right. Um, so, yeah. in two yeah. hours, let's let's give them enough funding. And and oh, there's an and. Breaking news: exclusive item uh, <laughs> came in right before the show. Oh yeah. Uh, uh, from a uh, friend of. Boston comedy in general yeah. and wonderful human Noah Pisana. Uh, uh, they will, we're going to iron out the details, but uh, hopefully <laughs> we have a thousand dollar matching uh, mm -hmm. donation. So um, it really incredible. Um, yeah. So that, so, so if, if, if we're planning on rate, you want to raise $2,500 in, mm -hmm. in uh, the two hours that we have mm -hmm. uh, and we have a thousand dollar match we're basically starting the show halfway there. Yeah. So yeah. there's no sense. There, there's no, there's no, like we should, we should just be working to get maybe double that. Yep. Yeah. 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 Uh, it's a yeah. wonderful, so, wonderful problem to have. Yeah, it's a wonderful <laughs> problem to have. Uh, yeah. So big, huge shout out to Noah and On Point Improv. Uh, 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 On Point has just been uh, an amazing source of both uh, having a, a space for indie uh, improv teams uh, to get stage time and perform. Uh, I mean, stage time now, screen time now, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Uh, but even before the uh, the pandemic, uh, Noah's been uh, hustling with this uh, with this group, uh, giving indie teams uh, a, a chance to perform, but also raising money for all these different charities. Every month, it would go to a different uh, it would go to a different charity. Uh, just uh, really, really awesome work. So, uh, thank you so much, Noah, for uh, thinking of uh, thinking of us for that. Yeah. Uh, uh, what kind of stuff do you do you all have going on? Let's talk. Uh, uh, let's talk. Adi and Sophie right now. Okay. Um, uh, uh, yeah. Completely separate. What 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 kind of stuff do you have going on right now? Um, I my uh, my my main comedy home is with Comedy Sports Boston, uh, mm -hmm. which is where I originally met you, Matt. It is. Uh, yeah. And um, so we're still going strong. Uh, based out of Roslindale. So a lot of what Comedy Sports is doing these days is is corporate work, but we are putting on occasional shows. Um, so if you follow us, it's very easy to find at CSC Boston on any of the socials. Um, when we do have events, um, they'll be up there. And my other big outlet these days is on 2MB uh, on Thursday nights, quarantine action wrestling pandemic. Uh, oh. I I have a character named TV D who is hosting a Hanukkah uh, wrestling <laughs> event on Thursday night this on week. This, is it this Thursday? It's this Thursday night on the first night of Hanukkah, right after sundown. Oh, fantastic! Perfect. It's and called what's it called? Crazy Fights. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, in a really, um, I don't know, uh, maybe morally questionable way, uh, we've got a, a diverse group uh, religiously of wrestlers. 
and a Jewish champion will be there at the end of the tournament for each of them to fight. So you deal with how that makes you feel. We're I cannot, making choices. I can't, I can't wait. I can't yeah. wait to see this. Uh, yeah. We also do a lot with uh, as well. So yeah. I'm really excited. You also have a large, uh, uh, like you, you do a lot of oiling up. Uh, <laughs> you and your partner, uh, uh, your your wrestling partner Brian. Uh, yeah. Your one of your bits is uh, oiling, oiling up, and... which which Brian pointed out to me this morning. So we struggled, or I struggled a little bit with realizing that I hadn't made my character Jewish in any way over the last like seven months. <laughs> and then Brian was like, "Oh my God, we've made the oil last. It's been it's it's been a Jewish bit the entire the whole time. time, all building up toward Hanukkah. So anyway." Uh... So definitely tune in Thursday to see the culmination <laughs> of uh, of Adi's uh, <laughs> setup. <laughs> uh, TV Adi is the name of the, is the name <laughs> of the wrestler. Uh, uh, fantastic mm -hmm. uh, quarantine action wrestling, kind of the one of the staple shows here on uh, on the channel. Uh, very one of the most popular nights of the week. Uh, such a huge crowd. Uh, tunes in to that and the chat is just a buzz throughout the whole uh, show and it's buzz. such a fun mm -hmm. it's such a fun uh, uh group to be to be a part of may i may i say that this thursday the chat will be lit no, no. All right. no. <laughs> bye bye i'm out i mean you are yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah leave your camera on just walk away uh, uh that's that's how we that's how we put you in time out on this show it's gonna be lit uh, it's going to be lit. Uh, Sophie, uh, uh, what what do you, you, you just did a show last night. Uh, yeah, I just did uh, Glitty Liver, Glitty Liver, Glitty Litter with Glitty Liver. Glitter Improv last night. It was, yeah, it was maybe the, one of, one of the most fun, fun, wild things that I've ever, ever done in my life. Um, I'm also, you can see me fairly regularly on 2MB on um 69 minutes. Uh, yes, it, we call it the 69 minute show. Yeah, 69 minutes of, of sex with of me. Of sex with me. It's a, um, line, a yeah. line game for those of you that don't know. Uh, uh. It's been such a joy to be on it, uh, especially during these really difficult months. It's been great to do that. Um, please come see it. Uh, don't don't send the link to my parents. I mean, maybe send the link to my parents. They're kind of chill. Um, I'm also a social worker. Maybe don't send it to <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> my employer. Yeah. It's um, a Friday night show. Yeah, it doesn't start till nine. It's yeah. Friday night, Sophie. It's Friday it's, night. Yeah, yeah. Friday night, Sophie is very different from Monday yes. morning, Sophie. Yes, yeah. Let's just yeah. get that perfectly mm -hmm. clear. And I always, I always got to plug it because it. This is also my favorite outlet. Uh, Right now, it's been hysterical. Um, my podcast on the Ness, uh, Mess and Finesse Network with Caitlin Kling, who is. Oh. Let me get the chat <laughs> right now. Uh, it's called Is It Wet? And it's a <laughs> comedy movie podcast about like slimy movies, uh, mostly from the 90s and 2000s. And it's just, oh, wow. Is it wet? Yeah. What's the latest? Uh, what's the latest uh, movie that you've watched? What's the, uh, the latest one we watched? Uh, we did uh, not the one that came out this week. We watched Prometheus for this week. But the latest one we watched was uh, we did. Uh, the battle of the snow trains. So we watched Polar Express and Snowpiercer and compare them <laughs> it, for our for our holiday yeah. Christmas episode. Yeah, yeah. two yeah. very similar, same universe, I believe. Yes, yes. Uh, Snowpiercer yeah. and Polar Express. They actually refitted the Polar Express mm -hmm. to turn into the Snowpiercer. Mm -hmm. Literally, it is there in in the movie. It is, <laughs> it is in the text. It's not. It's not subtext. That's so. Uh, uh, I mean, the question on everybody's mind so far, uh, what's the wettest movie that you've seen? I think I think still The Fly is hard to beat oh, because God, that, oh. Oh. If, <laughs> if I remember it, watching that movie as a kid, the Jeff Goldblum version, right? Yeah, the Jeff oh, Goldblum version. Oh, it's so wet. Yeah. If anyone if there's another movie where Jeff Goldblum like spits up onto a glazed donut. Maybe that's a wet movie too, but nothing's gonna nothing's gonna beat that. It's already a glazed donut. 
It's already, ugh. No. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Because that's how flies uh, eat. Is they... Exactly. Yep. So of course, they had to, to show that. So Incredible. Uh, uh, wow. Yes or ever not been yes to, to the podcast central question? Yeah, we try to pick wet movies, but there's been movies that are, weren't as wet as we thought they were going to be. Yeah. Um, okay. What's a yeah. movie that was surprisingly non-wet? Or dry. Well, it was a dry movie. No, dry. <laughs> say non-wet. Yeah, yeah. That's, a, that's a good question. Um, I, yeah, I would say probably... Um, oh, man, we've chosen some... Some some very very wet movies. Looks like Caitlin's helping you out. Okay. Yeah, Blade, yeah. Blade like, is well, the number two. It wasn't. Yeah, the fan, fan. We haven't done the fan lot, but I imagine that's a pretty. It's a pretty. Uh, it's a pretty dry. Dry. The fan is dry. Dry. It's complicated. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, big yeah. shout out to uh, uh, Lizzie Roddy uh, out in the out in the chat right now. Good morning, Liz. Thanks for tuning in. Always good to to see your uh, see your. Uh, name pop up in the chat. Uh, the blob, uh, yeah. Caitlin says, was surprisingly not wet. Interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hmm. And I think that's because it takes place in the 1950s, historically a very, 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 very dry era. era. That's true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, you should watch. I think they did a remake of The Blob. Yeah, uh, uh, they mm -hmm. did. In, I think in, in, in the 80s. Yeah. So, so yeah. I'm wetter, sure the but... 80s version was much was much wetter <laughs> yeah. than the 50s uh, version. Uh, I feel like we should have kept Sam on to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we can work out a time where uh, uh, Sophie and Caitlin come on and and chat with uh, Sam about. Uh, I would love movies. nothing nothing more. Uh, yeah, I don't think I don't think I would love anything more. Incredible. Either. I think I'd maybe just kind of put myself backstage and <laughs> watch it happen. Uh, Raj in the chat is suggesting that he also guest on your pod. Oh, I would also also love that. So Sam, please please come on the pod. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, come on the pod. <laughs> <laughs> Be a guest. Uh, uh, Adi, a Sophie, uh, you both are just a wonderful delight. Thank you for all that you do. I can't can't wait for next Sunday. It's going to be a great time. Uh, give us the name of the give us the name of the of the event one more time. And uh, we did not give that to you at all. Oh, uh, laughing I, for I liberation, a comedy fundraiser for CCI. Laughing oh. for liberation. Mm -hmm. Yes, next Sunday, 6.30. Uh, uh, yeah, we'll be here. Can't wait. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Sophie and Adi. Uh, have a wonderful rest of your morning. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank Thanks you. so much for having us. Uh, wow. What a delight. What a delight. This has just been a, just a delightful, just a delightful show. It's uh, true. All in all. We've talked about just a myriad of things. We've covered the whole range. We have, we have, uh, uh, you know, we've had, um, we've had a segment that we, we haven't done the last couple of, of weeks cause we've kind of run out of time. Uh, yeah. We have time today. I'd like to, to get into some YouTube and let's uh, YouTube it. We haven't done this. Uh, uh, so, uh, you sent me, uh, Chloe, the one with the, the people doing handstands. Yeah. We, so, so we saw that one already. We're gonna, oh, did we watch uh, that? We're gonna do oh, the we wear a mask. That. Oh, that's right. Okay. Yeah. This is spoiler another spoiler alert. Spoiler <laughs> spoiler alert. This is our musical guest for today. <laughs> is uh, yes. So let me find this. Uh, can you can you vamp for a second while I uh, while Absolutely. I find it? Absolutely. <laughs> Guys, do you like <laughs> do you like Lumiere? the candle man from beauty and the beast, then you're going to love this public service announcement from Lumiere himself. <laughs> I'm just going to, instead of looking for the, for the thing, I'm just going to uh, uh, do a, do a search. Uh, all right, here we go. Uh, perfect. Oh, this is explicit. So, uh, uh Oh, uh -oh. low cousin, low cousin. Can you hear it? 
I cannot. <laughs> okay, because I don't have the sound shared. Uh, this is all things. These are all things that Mike would do. Uh, Mike, normally. come back. We miss you. Mike, we miss you. Uh, all right, we're we're better now. Let's go back to the beginning. Okay. Here we go. Where a mask? Wear a mask. Is this really much to ask? Tie some fabric round your face. Oh, it's the simplest of tasks. At the gym, <laughs> she at won't the store, wear it. Don't do she it. won't do it. Door. No, these mandates aren't malicious. All your theories are fictitious. Stop the lies. Stop the fights. No one's taking away your rights. All the speculation makes me need a flash. <laughs> It's a mask, it's a mask. Heaven sakes, it's just a mask. Such a shame that asking folks to follow rules get you harassed. You can shout, you can glare, but listen, Karen, I don't care. I've never seen folks so dramatic over a fing piece of mask. Most of hot, quit your bitching, there's a thought. Suck a top, and don't you give me any sex. We've got a lot to do, and it's not just the flu. So wear a mask. Wear a mask. Wear a mask. Wear a mask. <laughs> oh, this song is terrifying and hilarious. part is when they rhyme grouchy and fouchy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's uh that was like you said it was one of those things that is equal parts uh uh hilarious and terrifying uh, all at the <laughs> all at the same time. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, I keep clicking on the same link. You would think I would stop doing that, but I don't. Yeah, stop doing that. I, Mike, I please can't. come back. We miss you. Oh, uh, so much, Mike. We hope that your hair is well rested. <laughs> it will be. The vacation was for his hair. His hair get his hair does a lot of work. One hundred percent. Yeah. Uh, uh, so that's that's our show. We need to. We need. We've got a couple little bits of housekeeping here. Let's. Uh, we we've got our our trivia question, so let's get back to that real yeah. quick. Uh, the trivia question, uh, and there's a hint in the question. This delicious spongy treat was invented in Schiller Park, Illinois, in 1930 by James Alexander Duar. What is the name of that treat, Chloe? Do you have a guess? Sponge cake. You're you're on the right track. It's a very specific type of sponge cake. With a very with a very specific name, Victoria Sponge Cake. No, not that classy. Oh, Twinkies. Twinkies. Oh, oh wow. Yeah, Twinkies were invented in uh, Schiller Park, Illinois. Uh, April Incredible. 16, 1930. So you're welcome, world, from the great state of Illinois. It's their greatest contribution. <laughs> Definitely one of uh, the Definitely greatest their greatest contribution. I would never associate Twinkies with sponge cake. I'm sorry, Kit. I didn't mean to. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> but it is. It's a sponge cake with the filling. It's spongy. Right? Is that? Uh, Twinkies would never associate with sponge cake either. <laughs> <laughs> Sponge cake's way too classy uh, for Twinkies. It'd be uh, a forbidden love. It would be a forbidden love. Uh, uh, so uh, who knew? Exactly. Who knew? Uh, so that's uh, there's your little uh, piece of uh, piece of trivia knowledge that you can take out into the world uh, with you today. 
Uh, let's see. Coming up uh, uh, later today, we've got our whole Monday night uh, lineup. Lineup uh, with uh, uh, that sounds right with uh, misinformation and will actually uh, just oh, man that is. Uh, talk about learning stuff you learn stuff in that uh in that I show they learning. have actual facts but they're uh they're disguised uh and thrown in with lots of uh misinformation uh but it's all about who sounds right not actually who is right hmm. uh so you know uh yeah. and followed by poof the magical game show where i mean it's a game show in the loosest sense of the of the word, uh, and then another the game show. Thing is that it's magical. It's, it's true. Uh, uh, Monday is really our game show night, uh, and then we've got Run On, which is is kind of the the sister show to Hello World, I would say, uh, with um, with the amazing uh, Ben Scria, and I host that show with the uh, faceless judge who is always sitting and judging. Always oh, terrifying. Yeah. And then close out your night uh, and and say good night, world, with uh, Kelly McFarland on Genuine Nonsense tonight at ten o'clock, right after, uh, right after Run On. Yeah. Uh, Chloe, do you have any words of uh, wisdom, or do you have words of wisdom? Words of wisdom from Chloe. This is a new segment we're we're working on. We're workshopping it. If you're gonna stay hydrated do it with your favorite cup if you're gonna stay hydrated do it with your favorite cup and make sure there's water in it and not just coffee put, yeah put put water in your cup the fact that coffee is 90 percent water it's really matter. weird that it's a, that it dehydrates you <laughs> <laughs> Uh, thank you all so much uh, for tuning in and watching. Uh, don't forget support, uh, help support the channel. Follow, subscribe, uh, head on over to our um, our T Public page. Uh, uh, get get that merch. Get that merch. Uh, get that T-shirt. The Breadinator, uh, designed by the amazing uh, Rebecca Bishop. And let's see, Rachel. Am I forgetting anything? Uh, I'm just going to throw that out there to Rachel before we close out. Birthdays. Um, birthday. Oh, we haven't done birthdays. We got time. Let's throw we out got some time. Birthdays. Let's do some good birthdays. Today's a good birthday day. Uh, Tom Waits' birthday is wow. today. Wow. Uh, Larry Bird and uh, uh, Sarah Bareilles. I love her. Isn't she great? I've got, I've got her songs. I've got her, the piano uh, music. I've been practicing Sarah Bareilles. Oh, nice. Chloe learned to play the piano with Sarah Bareilles. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then this week, uh, uh, let's see, tomorrow, Sammy Davis Jr.'s birthday, Kim Bassinger, uh, Sinead O'Connor. Uh, Wednesday, Margaret Hamilton. Do you know Margaret Hamilton, Chloe? I think so. Yeah, you would know her uh, uh, if you saw her. She played the Wicked Witch of the West in the, uh, oh, yeah. the Wizard of Oz movie. Uh, back yeah. uh, back in the day. Uh, also, oh, Dame yeah. Judy Dench on Wednesday. Uh, Thursday, Emily Dickinson, for you literary fans out there. And then Friday, Excellent. Terry Garr, uh, a, a fantastic uh, 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 actor from the 80s and 90s. And uh, Daryl Jones, uh, the bassist for the Rolling Stones. Incredible. Uh, his birthday on Friday. Uh, so those are our birthdays. Uh, no word from Rachel. If I've forgotten anything, that means I haven't forgotten everything. Excellent. Anything. I've gotten everything <laughs> perfectly right. Uh, we need and, to get you a remember all. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The most worthless, worthless piece of wizardry technology that there is. <laughs> because it tells you you forgot something, but not what you've forgotten. Can't remember what I've forgotten. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Neville, I feel you. Uh, so that's been our show. Thank you all so much for watching. Uh, um, have a wonderful rest of your day. Goodbye, world. Goodbye, world.